So here we are folks again back with some more TW2020 action. Today we are in the Death of the Territories mod as you'll be aware with the, the old WWF logo in the top left hand corner. Uh, the end of show, uh, end of month show for February. 13 months away from Wrestlemania. And it's a weird time because there's so many feuds and kind of matches that you want to make happen and you're like, got all them for Wrestlemania. So. There's a few repetitive matchups here. We are um, missing two major hitters, Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan, both with New Japan Pro Wrestling. However, that may be for the last time. Uh, I had a wee look at the relationship between myself and New Japan, and I thought Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant's one of the most over people in the world. I want him in an exclusive deal. So. Change the relationship in a stance of we can not we can you know kind of steal from each other, and New Japan went hostile on me, so that's quite interesting. But it also means a mega contract offered to Andre the Giant, which will be very very draining on our resources. But if we can guarantee that guy in our company for a while, we should be absolutely sailing, uh, and a Hulkster as well. And then that may lead to more guys down the line signing exclusive written deals. Um, just as we continue to build up our reputation and size across the United States and then of course globally uh, as we hopefully one day will take over the wrestling landscape similar to how Vince did. It's another one of our Baltimore Stadium shows as you can see there looking to take close to the 45,000, 47,000. Andre is on the show I think I did book him. No I didn't, of course he's with New Japan. I can't remember I booked great. So hopefully it's a good show, it should gain us pop, uh, some for, uh, some opportunities as well, like Satomi Rich for the first time on pay-per-view, which is quite cool, and yeah, just hopefully tide us along to the next big show, where hopefully Andre and Hogan will be here forever. So let's kick on, this is our big show for February. Bob Backlund starts off with a promo, and he's just basically berating Hulk Hogan, as the Hulkster obviously hasn't made it. Disappointingly only a 45 though, I kind of was hoping for a wee bit more there, but um, hopefully we can end that feud with the final Hogan vs Backlund match, just uh, to end the feud and put the Hulkster over, because he hasn't got over as much as I'd like, but there is still time. Then at about they had great heat and good wrestling as Bob Backlund defeated Hector Guerrero in 10.47 with the cross-face chicken wing, a 72 rated match up here, a 60 for Hector, a 71 for Bob Backlund. Just gaining the, the heel some momentum here, and that also gets the crowd hotter with a very good opener. Then another promo with Bobby the Brain Heenan introducing two of the members of the Heenan family, which is of course Ravishing Rick Rude and Larry Zabisco. Rick Rude is in the early stages of his development, just entered the wrestling world, so that's why he looked lost, everyone else looked good, and overall it was a segment rating of a 41. But it was Don Morocco who teamed up with Larry Zavisco with Rick Rude in action later on. He's just using both of his clients at once. And they featured an about that had great heat and good wrestling that saw the Road Warriors defeat Morocco and Zavisco in 1618 when Road Warrior Animal defeated Don Morocco with a power slam. I was kind of talking about the idea of adding Morocco to the faction and that may still happen. But here was all about making the Road Warriors continue their great reign with their 8th defence of the Tag Team Championships, a division that probably does mean some more depth to it, but that will come once we get some more written and exclusive deals. So a 77 rating there, with obviously getting the crowd hotter. Both Morocco and Zabisco benefiting from hot new moves, and of course the great excellent chemistry with Animal and Hawk. Next up was a decent matchup, Subpar Wrestling. Eddie Gilbert defeated Rick Rudd in 8.28 with the Fireball. 55 for Eddie Gilbert's just kind of stop-start push. He's been, been getting wins and he was getting losses. Now he's winning again. And just Rick Rudd getting at least showcased on a bigger stage. So after that he can then eventually, as I say, get his push down the line. But win for the babyface. A lot of negatives there as you'd expect due to a storytelling matchup. And of course, the way the locker room is in 19. 84. I have a promo with Gino Hernandez and it's just him saying it's too easy being IC champion and hell maybe one day he's going to be world heavyweight champion so maybe a wee bit in hindsight that he's going to be chasing that belt down the line 
but a 74 rated promo and his tail defence against Jimmy Superfly Snooker had great heat and good wrestling when Gino won in 1742. It's the 14th defence of the IC title. This reign is just going to go on and on and on. But I think it's a good match up here, but with Snooker being 40, it's all about putting the next generation over as we head to the mid 80s. So some good performances there, good segment rating, overall perfect, and that'll be Snooker's last chance at Gino. Another promo was the American Dream Dusty Rhodes alongside Tommy Rich, making his first live event, a big event appearance. He had a few uh, appearances on television, but it's given him a good opportunity here with a, a very overworker. Hopefully that can translate in a matchup. Uh, the rating was okay, a 66 isn't fantastic for a promo, but it is something we can hope can drive them forward in the match. And they get a 78, a 79 I should say, sorry. Uh, but they had fantastic heat and good wrestling. As Dusty Rhodes and Tommy Rich defeated the Eastern Bloc in 1655 when Tommy Rich pinned Ivan Koloff with the pile driver. So 79, as I say, the baby face is far more over than the heels, and that's with Dusty off his game as well. The problem is, I'm trying to keep so many of the over heels away from the over faces, so when WrestleMania hits next year, boom, perfect. And I want to keep as many well in for unbeaten streaks as I can. Finish the show with a Kurt Henning promo as he's going to defend the championship again against Jake Roberts. Jake getting one final opportunity against Kurt Henning, so that was a 78 for that. Just really going about how good he's been and how it's, uh, it's been a great honour to defend the championship belt in front of all these people. And their match also gets a 77. Very, very even event tonight. But fantastic heat, great wrestling, and Kurt Henning defeats Jake Roberts in 2030 with the Henning Plex. It was the fourth defence of the WWF World Heavyweight title and 83 played 68 in terms of in-ring performance. Both guys have pretty good chemistry, it lifted the match up and it was a decent storyline with some heat alongside it. With the negative just mostly being stamina for Jake and the locker room morale. So overall we get a 77. We increase our pop in six regions so not everywhere. We can see there 77, 78, 79 for a lot of segments. Very close. We are obviously wanting to get that pop increase, but at the same time we're looking to see how good we are financially. So we'll jump back in once we get to the 1st of March. So, before we check our financial situation, there's the big contract that we're giving Andre the Giant. Three years, $209,160 a month. But one of the biggest stars, if not the biggest star in wrestling at this time, is now with the WWF exclusively. So he's here, as well as Hulk Hogan. That deal's been done as well. We have lost someone in this time. Uh, Ivan Putski's walked out on us. We might need to actually go and sign some people on exclusive deals, but it's good to get him in. Uh, as you can see there, Putski walking out, Andre leaving there and we now have chronic upper back pain for Road Warrior Hawk. He's probably carried the tag division for that long so we'll check the medical side of that. Two months for Rennie Gooley and two months for Hawk. We can both wrestle but it's obviously best to protect them for their long term health but you can see it was a good month. Uh, 1.4 million our biggest gain in profit by a long way. 200,000 over the last time. Obviously that's down to less miscellaneous, a lot less cheaper on workers as well. Although that is going to slowly but surely go up, because that's obviously three people on exclusive written contracts. Two written contracts with Hawk and Animal, but the exclusive written deals for Hogan and Andre and Gino Hernandez as well. So I think the next month will be get a lot more people tied down. We've got nine million to spend. We're quite in a healthy position. Let's make sure we can get that size sorted and get on the road to becoming a big company. On that front, Great Lakes is at 65, Mid Atlantic's at 65, so we've got 12 to get in there. New England's at 68, so 9 to get there. The Tri State is at 72, 5 to get there. The big one is the Southeast, which is Southeast, we've got back to 52, so that's I still another 25 to go there, so quite a good bit. But you can see there where that was at. Along, if you look at most places, we've gained quite considerably. Northwest was at 11, so to get that back to there's good. Puerto Rico's going up slowly but surely. 
in uh, Hawaii. We're on something in Hawaii at one point, but the main thing is getting most of these places to a good position and the World Wrestling Federation will thrive, possibly, at the same time as it did in real life. So thank you for watching. I'll go ahead and sort out. As I say, maybe some mid card backs, uh, just really people that can help put people over. And you never know what could change. There could be a second show at one point. You never know. We'll keep it as it is just now. But hopefully you join us for that end of month show in March. So thanks for watching. Stay safe. And I'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.